2019 is the beginning of a new race to the moon. In January, China made history after they achieved the first landing of a space probe in the South Polar Aikton Basin on the side of the moon facing away from the Earth, a historical event. According to the Xinhao News Agency, the Chinese Space Agency, CNSA, has placed the Shange 4 space probe on the bottom of the Karman Crater, which is 186 kilometers in diameter. Because no direct radio connection can be established on the other side of the moon, the Shukuao transmission satellite serves as a communication bridge between Shange 4 and Earth. Never before had a probe successfully landed on the far side of the moon. Also on board the moon lander is a radiation measuring device developed by scientists from the University of Kiel. The Lunar Lander Neutron and Dosimetry, LND for short, is slightly larger than a handkerchief and will measure the radiation and the water content of the lunar soil for one year and transmit the results to Earth. After the successful landing, the rover U-2-2, in English Jade Rabbit 2, left the probe via a ramp. The vehicle has a wide-angle camera to capture three-dimensional images of the moon surface, a moon radar, an infrared spectrometer, and radiation detectors from Germany and Sweden. In this mission, the structure and composition of the lunar surface and the soil layers will be analyzed, and various radio-astronomical observations will be carried out and evaluated. The landing module also transported a cylindrical aluminum alloy payload container with an insulated layer. It's 18 centimeters high, has a diameter of 16 centimeters, and weighs approximately 3 kilos. According to the Chinese news agency, seeds of cotton, rape, potatoes, arabidopsis, yeast, and fruit flies were shipped in the container. As we can see, there are no silkworms on this list, even though all the news coverage is about this very content. We think it would not have been logical to send silkworms to the moon, as they're very hungry and cannot find enough food. Fruit flies, on the other hand, hardly need any food and are therefore much better suited. The aim of this experiment is to test the processes of respiration and photosynthesis in living organisms on the moon. However, this seems to be only the beginning, as China is already planning a permanent space station, which should be completed by the beginning of 2020. In addition, more exciting missions are planned for the future. A brief historical review. Half a century ago, both the USA and the Soviet Union succeeded in photographing the back of the moon. However, they never landed there. Although in 1962, an unmanned American mission attempted exactly that, unfortunately unsuccessfully. The first pictures published by China show a landscape whose colors differ greatly from the gray tones that we are accustomed to from NASA. Although this difference in hue has caused controversy, it's not unusual as it depends, among other factors, on the angle of refraction of sunlight. We can see this in the latest pictures from China published on Friday, January 11th, where you can see much more layers of color than the first photos. One of the images published by the CNSA was a 360-degree panorama of 80 photos taken with a camera in the landing module. After the U-2-2 had left the landing module, they photographed each other. This is the official news that the media is showing us. But what is there behind it? What exactly is China really looking for? The fact that the landing took place in the Karman Crater is no coincidence. The crater is located in the South Pole Aitken Basin and is one of the areas on the moon that has had the most meteorite impacts to date. This is why one of China's goals is to search for very valuable minerals and metals such as gold, platinum, nickel, and lithium with the rover U-2-2. The abundance of these elements can be due to the numerous meteorite impacts. However, other theories suggest that China wants to use the moon as a source of energy. Some experts are convinced that China is looking for helium-3, an almost unlimited fuel. The chief scientist of the Chinese Lunar Research Program, Ouyang Shiwan, 
October times that the helium-3 contained in the dust on the lunar surface would be enough to supply mankind with enough energy through nuclear fusion for 10,000 years. To obtain this rare isotope, China would have to mine in a large area. According to experts, more than one million tons of helium-3 are only a few meters below the lunar surface. However, China is not the only power interested in the moon. Other countries have also expressed the desire to land there. One of them is the USA, which never returned to the moon after Apollo 17 in 1972. But why suddenly the rush after 46 years? Dmitry Rogozin, director of the Russian space agency Roscosmos, announced that his country is preparing to send a probe to the moon in the next two years. He explained that they had decided to resume the moon project. In 2021, the spacecraft Luna 25 will land on the south pole of the moon. He also mentioned that the USA had asked Russia to develop a version of Soyuz that could fly to the moon and back. In 2017, President Donald Trump signed an agreement requesting NASA to return to our orbiting neighbor. Another country interested in the moon is India. The Indian Space Agency, ISRO, has planned the launch of the lunar probe Chandrayaan-2 for January 2019. In February, Israel not only makes its first moon landing, but also the first privately organized one. The 585-kilogram Bereshit tent capsule will fly to the moon in a rocket. Even Japan is planning to launch a small moon lander called SLIM in 2021. And finally, together with the European Space Agency, Russia is planning to send the Luna 27 probe to the south pole of the moon to search for water. Is it just a coincidence that now everyone wants to go to the moon at the same time? There's probably something else behind this. Something that's not so clear to us and something that we don't have access to. Of course, governments have already accustomed us to showing little or nothing of these space voyages. They only show us the essentials, so we really have no idea what they're doing there. NASA allegedly sent several missions to the moon, and they were all surrounded by controversy. Throughout history, statements have come to light from people in the official and military circles who have uncovered the existence of alien bases hidden on the moon and thereby uncovered NASA's lies. People like former CIA pilot John Lear, for example, who through as many contacts was able to gain comprehensive knowledge of extraterrestrial bases on the moon. Not to mention Sergeant Carl Wolf, who claimed to have seen images of huge artificial structures on the moon that were retouched by NASA staff to keep them secret. Would it be possible that China's goal is to find specifically these bases? Unfortunately, we cannot expect transparency from China or from any other government. All this seems more like a simple media show to deceive the masses and hide their true intentions. So, what will the Chinese Space Agency and those of other countries surprise us with in the future?